What's up YouTube, this is Quan, the Urban Sportsman, and I am coming back to you guys today with a follow-up video to the kayak trolling video I did a few months back. Um, that one was about long line trolling. This one is going to be a little different. We're going to delve into something um, that I tend to do more than long line trolling, or I do accompanying long time trolling, and that long line trolling, and that is three-ray rigging. Um, three-ray rigging is pretty simple. Pretty much what you're doing is you're going to use a little three-way swivel. I don't know if you guys would be able to see that because it's really, really small. Three-way swivel, this is a size eight, but I usually normally use like a size four or a size two um, for three-way rigging. And pretty much the thing with three-way rigging is you're gonna run, you have, you got it. You have three, ray, three holes on your swivel, right? So one hole is gonna go, have a line going from your swivel to your rod. That'll be your main line for me. I use mono or fluorocarbon. More than likely, I use mono, to be quite honest. I never really go above 12-pound test line uh, just because I don't like the lift that it gives you. Um, also, that second line, which is right here, it kind of is going to go off that way. That'll be the one that runs to either your live bait or your crankbait or whatever type of bait you're trying to use to catch walleye or whatever species of fish you're trying to catch with it. Uh, and that bottom one, that you can't see because I'm holding it wrong. There we go. Your bottom hole, that's going to go to your weight. Uh, and that's pretty much the gist of a three-way swivel, swivel. I'll see if I can find a diagram to pull somewhere in here so you can see it. See exactly how they ran. Um, the good thing about three-way swivel is, I mean, three-way rig is the fact that unlike long line trolling, you don't have so much line behind you to where when you turn or... Uh, anything you don't have to deal with a whole bunch of line that can get tangled up especially if you're running multiple lines um so let's really get into it let's talk about the three-way three -way, three -way rig first thing what type of rod do i use i personally use ugly sticks for three-way three-way rig um, i use a seven to seven foot six ugly stick um, i want the longest lo longest rod i can have to get as far out away from the kayak as i possibly can um, I like a limber rod because specifically for walleye, a lot of times they'll grab your leech or whatever it is and just kind of hang back. I don't want to snatch troubles out of a walleye's mouth or snatch a hook out of their mouth. I want them to be able to settle in and then I can just increase my paddle strokes and set the hook on the fish. Now, like I said before, I never really go above 12 pound test line when it comes down to three-way rigging. Three -way rigging. Uh, specifically on my main line, um, I'll go a little bit lighter on my line that runs to my sinker uh, just because sometimes you get into those situations where you are dealing with um, a, a, a bottoms that are rocky or have a lot of brush and things like that will snag you up. I'll use a lighter line in those cases just because I may want to break that sinker off in order to get my bait back. Uh, and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit further though uh, in just a second. So let's talk about... Uh, why I choose mono. Like I said, the same thing with that limber rod. I choose mono because of the stretch. A lot of times when you're catching a walleye, like I said, they try to just grab a bait and lag behind. That's earlier in the season. They get aggressive in the summertime, and that's a totally different animal altogether. Um, but when they do that, I want that line stretch. That's just me. Or if I'm paddling along and I get a snag, I want that line stretch so I have the opportunity to get my bait back. Uh, you know, if you're like me, I, I live on a budget. I have a family, so uh, I don't like to waste my baits. I don't like to lose cranks. I don't like to use um, spoons, anything like that. So I, I like that limberness and I like the, the, the stretchability of mono. And another reason I use mono filament line is because on my, on my line, my leader line that's going to my, um, whatever my bait is, be it live bait or a crank bait, I want it to float. The whole purpose of a three-ray rig is to get your bait close to the bottom, but not on the bottom. Uh, and as a result, I want something that's going to float. And fluorocarbon sinks. You know, same thing with um, with braid. Braid doesn't ne doesn't necessarily sink, but because it's so kind of neutrally buoyant, I would say. Any weight that's on you from your bait will cause it to sink to the bottom. And I don't want that because I don't want it to snag up. I want something that's going to float. Um, so now that we got the line, we talked about the rod. Uh, I, I use spinning gear personally. I am investing in some casting reels and some line counter reels because I found that line counters in particular will help me in get, keeping my bait where I want it to be when I'm trolling for my kayak. Uh, I don't have one right now, but that's an investment I'm going to be making sometime this summer. And when I do, I'll do a review on it. 
um, so you guys can see and I'll do a review on whatever reel I get to accompany that. Um, so what type of baits we are, are we going to use when we're using a three-ray rig? Uh, first thing for me, uh, earlier in the season when fish are biting things that are smaller, I'm using live bait. Uh, and I'm going to use live bait in a couple of different ways. Earlier in the season, I'll use a Lindy rig. So right after the um, the opener on Inland Lakes here, here in Michigan, which is usually the last Saturday in April, I use a Lindy rig, and that's because I'm using live bait. And what am I trolling with that? I'm going to be trolling. Um, I'm trolling small minnows because the, the the minnows at that time of year are still younger the year they're small. I'm using leeches. I'm using crawlers. So I'm using the Lindy rig in that instance. Um, the good thing about the Lindy rig is it floats. Because, like I said, you have just that single octopus hook, and you have that float there that keeps it up. And I make these myself a lot of times just because it's easier and cheaper than going out and buying them, even though they're like a dollar and 29 cents. Um, the other thing about the Lindy rig is when you make them yourself, I tend to make crawler harnesses with those because specifically one lake I fish, there tend to be a lot of uh, white bass and white perch and they tend to go for my crawlers a lot of times. So I have a harness there so I catch that bycatch as well. Um, and, and, and like I said, sometimes walleye short strike as well. Um, the next thing I use, same thing earlier in the year, but I'll use these throughout the entirety of the, uh, of the fishing, fishing season is I'm going to use crankbaits. Crankbaits on the end of a, um, a three-way rig are great. Um, and the reason being is because they're going to Im imitate that minnow. It has a lot of shine, a lot of flash, so in turbid water, you don't have to worry about having to adjust for that. Um, you don't have to worry about not catching fish because they can't see your live bait. Um, here's another one that I use oftentimes. But there are some tips when it comes down to these. Uh, first tip, these right here. Flicker shad, that's a no-no with a three-ray rig. Reason being is because it's a deep diver. And if you only got 12, 12 inches of lead between your sinker and your, and your three-ray swivel, that means that this bait only has about 12 inches to dive. Well, this is a deep diving crank, so it's going to be dredged in the bottom. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to suspend in a column above where the fish are if they're hung in the bottom. Or I want to go through them if they're not far off the bottom. I need them to be able to see my bait so I don't run um, deep deep cranks so these guys i don't run deep cranks because it just you're wasting your time you're just going to be snagging up and, and losing baits to be quite honest with you uh, another thing like i said shallow runners you want to run shallow runners but not only that use something with the rattle that works uh, but when you are perching your shallow running crank baits or, or jerk baits or whatever the one thing you want to do is you want to pick a jerk bait or a crank bait that either suspends or floats. The original rapplers are great for this. Um, the floating, the floating, um, excuse me, the floating jointed rapplers are great for that as well. They work great early in the season, throughout the season. Um, and you just size up and scale up your your crankbait accordingly. So you got this little guy that's only about two and a half inches. This guy, which is three inches long, um, not that big, and you can go as big as you want. Uh, the next thing you're going to use outside of live bait and crankbaits, you're going to use spoons. Well, you know what? Before I say that, let's talk about live bait a little more. Um, one of the things I love to fish for walleye with in particular is our leeches. And for me, when I'm using a three-way rig, these guys, these guys, I'm going to show you up here as well, the floating jig heads. I'll show you on both screens. Floating jig heads um, work great for that. Uh, they work great for using minnows, um, crawlers, but leeches in particular I use a lot. And the good thing about these is you can dress these up. Um, for me, one of the things I'll do with a floating jig head is when I know I'm going to be fishing in dark and stained water. I'll get some of my fly time material that's in dark, I mean, in bright colors, and I will add that to this floating jig head, and then I'll attach my leeches to that. That way, I get that shine and that reflection of whatever fly time material in a bright color that I want to use. And also, that'll bulk up my bait quite a bit and give it a little more action, um, which is a great thing. So I keep a ton of floating jig heads in my box specifically for that. Um, another thing I do as well is. You know how you go to a Walmart or whatever and they had those packs of just, they're just a basic snailed hook. A lot of times I'll add just the floats to those 
and add my bait to that in order to get those guys where I want them to be in the column. And I'll use regular live bait in that instance. And it works just fine. And I add fly timer too to those two to give them some more bulk and some more shine for when I'm in dark water. The next thing you're going to use when you are using a three-way rig is going to be spoons. Um, these are sinking spoons. These are jigging spoons. I do not use these for three-way rigging. I'm just give, using these for an example. Um, however, what I do use are Michigan Stinger spoons and Daredevils. Um, the reason being is because they don't sink. So when you're paddling, you know, that thing is going to be fluttering behind you. And in the case of a Michigan Stinger spoon, in some cases, they have a crawler harness on the back of those. And you can take the hook off of a Daredevil and add a crawler harness to that, too, if you really want to. And that just adds a little more attraction, a little more scent that gets those fish to come and bite. Uh, and it works perfectly, to be quite honest. Um, beyond that, with three-ray rigs, what else am I using? Mm, that's about it for me. I, I don't really go too far out on those things. Do you only want to use this in freshwater applications for walleye? Nope. I've caught everything on a three-way rig. Um, it, I've caught catfish, big channel cat. I've caught striped bass down in Oklahoma. I've caught hybrids down in Oklahoma on three-way rigs. Um, I'm sure it'll work on the salt as well. And I don't see why it would, wouldn't work anywhere. To be quite honest with you, I think sometimes we get a little narrow-minded when it comes down to, well, this is a freshwater tactic or this is a saltwater tactic. Look, the fish just want to eat, and as long as you're presenting something to them that looks like food, they're going to bite it. Now, when it comes down to three-way rigs, another thing that you, that you think about is the weights that you're going to use. Um, a lot of people will use bell sinkers. You know, I personally use them, um, and I'll show you up close over here. Uh, bell sinkers, I've used them as high as two ounces to get my bait down to where I want to be. But there are a couple of things you got to think about when you think about your, sink your sinker. Think about the weight in concordance with your bait. So if you're using a bait that's buoyant, you want to use a heavier weight because when you're paddling, you're going to get a pendulum effect. So what's going to happen is you're, you're paddling, and so here's your weight, and here is your, um, your bait. As soon as you start to paddle, it's on the bottom now. But that bait then starts to move and pinch them out and up because of the weight and the buoyancy combined with the fact that you are now paddling, now giving that thing a lift that you didn't want. So you want to go with the heavier weight, the more buoyancy you have, and the deeper you are as well. Uh, another quick tip to deal with the pendulum effect and to keep that bait as low to the bottom as possible is what you want to do is I don't cast three-ray rigs. What I'll do is I'll drop my line straight down to the bottom and then I'll paddle off you know, 15, 20 yards, and that 15 or 20 yards will be enough for me to go ahead and click my bell over, and now I know I'm not going to get a pendulum effect. I'm still going to stay right down on the bottom where I want to be. Do I run the risk of missing a fish during that time? Yeah, but honestly, it's not that big a deal. If the fish are going to bite, they're going to bite when it's on the move as well. Um, so first weight, bell, bell sinkers. If I'm in an area where they're snaggy, um, one of the things I'll use is I'll use heavy split shot. I'll line that line with heavy split shot. That way, when I get into a snag, all I got to kind of do is pull and the split shot will slide off. And then when I need to, I can just replace the split shot. They also make, um, not Lindy, Northland makes a trolling weight that goes up to about an ounce and a half, but it has a little wire through it. it looks kind of like a, um, a bottom bouncer, but they're smaller. Uh, those work great as well. Another thing that I am investing in this year that I found this past winter is Northland makes a slinker, a sinker um, holder, kind of like a swivel, but it's plastic that has a little snap on it. So when you get into a snag of some sort, all you got to do is pull, you lose your sinker, but you keep everything else because that snap just opens up to adjust for the fact that you're snagged up. Uh, also in heavy snagged areas, another thing you can use is heavy pencil weights. Those work great as well. Um, and you get a lot less of that pendulum effect with that because they have a lot less drag because they're narrow. Um, the other thing I do more so than this, when I find that I don't want to really be on the bottom, I just want to be above it. What I'll do is I'll drop straight down. But what I'll use as a bait is I'll use my jigs. I use a jig head up to an ounce. Um, this is a walleye jig head. I use one of these uh, coupled with a live bait and or Another big thing I'll use it with, I'll couple it with twister tail. Depending on what time of the year, the earlier in the year, I'm going to use a smaller twister tail because, once again, the bait fish are smaller 
than what they would be late in the year. Uh, also, paddle tails. This is a really, really little paddle tail, but I'll use them all over the three and a half inches uh, as the summer and the fall progresses, and I'll catch more fish that way. And that'll be what I'll use to get my weight down, and I'll use live bait or crank bait or spoon on my leader line. The other thing I use as well in the cold, like right after ice out, is I'm going to use a hair jig at the bottom. You can't really see it on this guy. Uh, this one's an orange and, orange and black bucktail. Um, you can see it still has some line on it. Sorry about that. But uh, these guys I use when it's cold out, you know, late in the season, early in the season. I'll use those at the bottom, and I'll pick up a few fish on those as well, um, especially when I stop and sit still because that hair has its own action. Another one, another style I'll use are the bunny bucktails. Uh, here's one in uh, white and silver. Um, I'll show you there as well so you can kind of see it a little better. This guy. Um, I'll use those in, in, in earlier and later in the season. And in fact, I'll use those all year long, to be quite honest with you, because they just catch fish regardless. Um, but that is making all parts of my three-way rig work for me at a time. I'm not risking a fish being down where my sinker is and not being able to catch it because I got a jig head down at the bottom and I have whatever bait I want to have up top. And it's just a it's a win-win in my position. But only thing about that is... I do not have it dredging the bottom when I'm using jig heads because I don't I don't like to lose stuff. You know, it, it gets expensive when you do that, and it's just a waste of time. Um, so in those instances, like I said, I'll be just above the bottom if I can, or just enough where I'm ticking the bottom. Or if there are weeds and I want a three-way rig, if the weeds are low, I want to be just above that weed line. So I'm just going just into it or just above it. Um, beyond that, three-way rig, and what else can I say about it? Um, it's essential. If you're a kayak fisherman and you want to catch fish, period, doesn't matter where you are, it's an essential tool to have in your arsenal when you go out and you troll with your kayak, especially if you're a paddle kayaker. Um, it's easier to troll if you have a, a Hobie or whatever because you're hands-free. Um, however, for those of us who can't be hands-free, we want to use all the tools that we have, and three-way rig is an essential tool. Um, beyond that, that's about it, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment below so I can see what you guys think. What do you guys think about three-way rigging? If you tried it, if you haven't, um, let me know some of your tips. And uh, like I said, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.